Uh, tell me about the work that you're doing and to begin. Well, you know that uh, EGFR is a hot topic in, in oncology in general, and especially since a couple of years in radiation oncology, since this famous Bonner paper came out in the New England Journal of Medicine that inhibition of uh, EGFR of the epidermal growth factor receptor, which is regulating cell growth and so on, is inhibiting these pathways, which are the signaling pathways of EGFR, and thereby inducing a higher response to radiation therapy. Uh, of course, this was done in a, in a selected group of patients with yep. high-grade uh, carcinomas, and so in, in the heterogeneous population of tumors, actually. So, but the results were significantly, although not very high, but significant. So we are now working on the basic mechanisms, how inhibition of the EGFR mechanism induces radiosensitization in tumor cells, which are characterized by overexpressed EGF, EGFR or mutated EGFR. Mm -hmm. Uh, any special EGFR? There's it's, lot, there's well, yeah, there are four, four yeah. family members of, yeah. EG, of the ERB family yeah, yeah. group. Uh, especially the EGFR is heavily overexpressed, but also ERB2 in breast cancers, for example. And all the other receptors like ERB3 and ERB4 are, of course, working or interacting with the EGFR or ERB1 and ERB2. So we uh, have a focus on not only EGFR or ERB1, but also on ERB2 and ERB3 as well. Right. And uh, there is a special mutation of EGFR as well, of the ERB1 receptor, which is the EGFR V3 mutation, which is predominantly seen in glioblastomas yeah. and probably... Uh, responsible for the high rate of resistance of these tumors. Okay. So you're looking at the mechanisms, what have you found? Well we found, uh, we were one of the first groups to find that the EGFR signaling pathway through the PI3K AKT pathway, which is uh, known as a survival pathway, mm -hmm. is radio sensitized or bringing radio resistance to the cell by activating the DNA repair machinery. You know, when you irradiate a cell, uh, the ionizing radiation induces DNA damage I and the cell it. tries to repair that. And if you inhibit this uh, repair processes, the cell has a lower capacity to survive. So an EGFR obviously is um, a radio protective mechanism because EGFR signaling induces DNA repair to bring the cell into a longer life. Is that an evolutionary thing? Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good question, actually, because um, it could be an evolutionary process in the, in the sense that if you have an EGFR uh, receptor which is responsible for triggering mitosis of cells, mm -hmm. cell division, so growth of cells, it's important that the cell has a correct DNA response. response. Yeah. Because otherwise the daughter cells would, be, would have DNA damages, for example, because in the S phase, in this phase where the cell is synthesizing DNA, a lot of errors and a lot of uh, damages is done, which need to be repaired before the cell goes into the, into the mitosis. And therefore there is a certain link that EGFR is a control mechanism for uh, uh, the genetic stability of the cell to provide genetic stability of the cell. In this case, if you irradiate the cell where you induce damage in the, mm -hmm. in the DNA, this might be a second backup mechanism to provide that the cell is trying to repair at least the DNA damages correctly and then uh, go into the next division. So does the radiation itself stimulate EGFR upregulation? Uh, it does not stimulate EGFR upregulation, it stimulates the EGF receptor. You know, okay. the EGF receptor, right. even if it's upregulated, is uh, in a constant active and inactive form. Right. And ionizing radiation by a mechanism which is not clearly understood at the moment induces the activation of the EGF receptor that go through phosphorylation processes on the tyrosine kinase domain of the molecule, of the EGF receptor molecule, which is the the, the master switch actually, which then triggers the different pathways downstream. Um, and therefore radiation can induce this process. Normally this is done by gross factors like EGF, which binds to the receptor and then activates the EGF receptor. But rate ionizing radiation does obviously, as far as this stands now, uh, more or less the same job. It has probably something to do with the process of activation and inactivation of the EGF receptor which is triggered by specific enzymes um, in the response to um, reactive oxygen species. Okay. Uh, and ionizing radiation induces reactive oxygen species in the cells which might 
inactivate enzymes which are deactivating uh, normally deactivating the EGF receptor. So it's a complex mechanism yeah. of mm -hmm. an interplay of many proteins at the, around the EGF receptor. You have a, an enormous choice of uh, uh, molecules to, uh, to, to test with your radiation in terms of interfering at the surface with the receptor or yes, with the yes. PI3 kinase pathway or even, I suppose, part one inhibitors looking at DNA repair uh, uh, of course, inhibition. Yes, yes. And where are you putting your money? Well, at the moment we are putting our money, which comes from federal government in <laughs> Germany. <That's okay. laughs> government, German government money. <laughs> German government money into the um, elucidation of the details of the EGFR mechanisms in regulating DNA repair. The major enzyme there, or the major molecule there, is the AKT kinase, mm. which goes into interaction with the DNA repair machinery. And uh, that's a very interesting story. And of course, um, this regulates only one part of the DNA repair mechanism, which is the non-homologous end joining. Yeah. When you bring in the PARP business, that's a repair mechanism which is specialized to repair single strand breaks. Yeah. And, and if single strand breaks, for example, um, um, are created in the S phase of DNA synthesis when the cell synthesizes its DNA, this may lead to double strand breaks which yeah. are then need to be repaired before the next mitosis. And uh, therefore PARP inhibitors, which are another hot topic here mm -hmm. at this conference, yeah. is uh, certainly an, another good target or a good, another good uh, tool to target the DNA repair machinery in tumor cells to increase their radiation sensitivity or to break their radio resistance. Mm -hmm. it, it seems that this has been a logical um, sort of outcome for radiobiology research for a long time. Um, you chair the Radiobiology Science uh, Committee at ESTRO. What are the other hot topics? There's EGFR, there's PARP. What else is really hot in the... Well, in actually, the in the radiobiology at the moment, everything is hot, yeah. <laughs> I would say. Uh, especially also the uh, relation of uh, the biological responses of normal tissues to ionizing radiation. As you know, this is still a problem in radiation therapy yeah, sure. because actually you can kill any tumor if you but. use a high enough dose, but for the cost of the normal tissue toxicity. Yeah. Yeah. And therefore, uh, there are special sessions on that as well. And there is also much effort being put in, in over the last 10, 15 years to resolve this problem. And we are now closer, of course, not at the, at the final line, but the, much closer to uh, understanding what's going on in the terms of sensitivity of the tumor, resistance of the normal tissue or sensitizing normal tissues by radio sensitizers, which are normally used often in, in the radiation therapy protocols, because most of these compounds which you use in chemo radiation are kind of sensitizers to the tumor cells, but yeah. also to normal cells. Anything else? Well, at the moment, I think uh, uh, we're just enjoying a great conference mm -hmm. with many very interesting talks. We ju just came from one very good session on, on, on DNA repair and EGFR, where mm -hmm. different aspects also yeah. under hypoxia yeah. are uh, studied. Because, you know, hypoxia is a major issue in radiation oncology because uh, almost, certainly almost solid tumors have a very hypoxic area, mm -hmm. which is three times more radio resistant than the non hypoxic area of the tumor. So there are special efforts to be done to exactly kill the hypoxic cells. And therefore, we need to understand the molecular processes which are going on there. Yeah. I, I think this is a, a really remarkable meeting. Uh, it's the first ESTRO I've been to for, for quite a few years. Uh, and I'm really impressed by the molecular biology, by the translational research. And, you know, in five minutes you've covered uh, EGFR, EGFR mutations, uh, AKT, uh, PARP, uh, hypoxia. I think that sort of uh, gives uh, non-radiation biologists a very good flavour of, uh, of what they're missing by not coming to Barcelona. I hope so. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Rodon. Thank That's you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.